What's up, everybody? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm so glad that you take the time and, and to put God first in the mornings. Uh, and some of you, maybe, you know, you're not Christ followers. Uh, you're not God believers. Uh, I understand that. Uh, if I had your experiences and maybe your education and, and, and many other variables in my life, I don't know where I would be today. So we want to welcome you. Uh, we want you to know that this is for everybody, uh, that we do discuss the Bible. Uh, we unapologetically uh, proclaim that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and we believe that the Bible is His Word. But we very much recognize that that's not uh, the um, experience of everyone. Uh, but we would like you to consider that because we think that uh, the gospel of Jesus, uh, the Word of God, the principles of God are worth considering. And that the principles of God, the laws of God, much like gravity, work whether you believe them or not. How many of you know that gravity works whether you believe it or not? You know why? Because it's a law. And it's, it's true. So you can say you don't believe in gravity all you want. But if you go out there and you climb up on top of your house and you jump off, you'll be an unbeliever until you hit the ground and realize that, hey, gravity, there's something to it. Today we're talking about the Trinity. Uh, we're talking about theology. I'm going to express and uh, define that in just a moment. We've been defining that now for a couple of days because it's kind of been the theme of our conversations here at Pray First. But the, one of the most important things I want to do is welcome you guys and all of you who are regulars here. Or let's say, what should we say? Uh, yeah, let's just say hashtag regular. I'm a hashtag regular. If you're a regular here, hashtag regular, that means you're, you come on a daily basis or as often as you possibly can. Not necessarily live because all of you do not join me live. Many of you join me uh, pre-recorded. So you can hashtag live or hashtag recorded, whichever you're watching this. Final thing about housekeeping before we jump into today's study, we want to welcome you for coming if you're a first-time person, or we just want to say hi to our friends, so we hit the hearts and the likes, and we tear them up. So all of you out there, tear them hearts up, hit them more than once, da -da 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 -da. get them likes going, we know that Facebook likes algorithms. Okay, so we've been talking about theology, and that that word can be so woo -hoo 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 -hoo, and only theologians can understand that, and great intellects who have Diving into the word Greek and Hebrew. And I'm telling you, let's demystify the word theology. Theo just means God. It refers to God. Theo. Theos. Ology refers to the study of. So theology is simply the study of God. And we're talking about the Trinity, even though we're breaking it down into three parts. The Trinity is three at one. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we're starting with Jesus. We talked about how Jesus was a carpenter. Therefore, he can understand me. He came. He lived in the body. He's not some God that's just so far removed from us that he can't understand what we're going through. We talked about Jesus as a shepherd, that he leads us in paths by still waters, and he causes us to lie down, and he protects us with his rod. We talked about Jesus as the teacher, how he teaches us and he guides us. And today we're going to talk about how Jesus is the good physician. Let me say that better. Jesus is the great physician. Now, I want to say something right here because, man, the, the practice of or the teaching of healing uh, can really get out of whack. It can really leave people, uh, um, what's the word, uh, feeling condemned, like they don't have enough faith if something didn't happen, or feeling like God's not listening. Because a lot of times what we'll attribute how God feels about us is what circumstances we're going through. Come here for just a second. Your circumstances is no indication of what God feels about you. The sickness, the condition of your body, the condition of your loved one's body, the condition of your circumstances, that is no indication of what God feels about you. The indication as to how God feels about you is that he would send his son. We believe that God sent his son, Jesus. Jesus is God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He sent his son to die on the cross. That's an indication of what God thinks about you. And I don't want to get preachy, but dude, I'm a preacher and I kind of just do that. So if you don't do the churchy thing, uh, forgive me. It just kind of comes out whether I want to or not, you know. It's like, so at least, at least now you know that's kind of who I am. So Jesus is the great physician. When you hear the word physician, what word comes to mind? Physical. Physical and physician are derived from the same root word. Physician is someone who is concerned 
about physical healing or someone who is gifted or someone who is trained in the art and the skill of physical healing. So when we say that Jesus is the great physician, why do we say that? When you hear someone refer to Jesus as the healer, Jesus is my healer, Jesus is my great physician, why do they refer to him as that? Because some of you haven't been healed, amen? Some of you believed, some of you trusted, some of you prayed with all the faith you could muster. And I want to tell you something. When you look in the Bible, there were people who had great faith and, and Jesus healed them. There were people who had little faith and Jesus healed them. We know of a story in the Bible where Jesus says, if you can believe, and the man cried out and said, I believe, but help my unbelief. In other words, he had tiny, tiny faith and Jesus healed him. And then there's other places where those people had absolutely no faith at all and Jesus healed him. But come here, come here, come here. There were people with great faith who weren't healed. There were people with little faith who weren't healed. There were people with tiny faith who weren't healed. There were people with absolutely no faith who weren't healed. So let me tell you something. His love for you is not an indication as to how he's answering you. I, I'm not even going to pretend to understand how God in his sovereignty picks and chooses what he does, but I trust him. And you can't just jump into this teaching today and trust him like that. I understand that. I wouldn't ask you to do something so foolish. I have a lifetime of experience with God before I can say that. So don't expect me to be expecting you to, oh, well, just believe it's written in the Bible. It's in a leather book. No, 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 no. I understand if you don't. But I want you to, those of you who are followers, to know why you believe what you believe. Listen to me. So, so, and, and maybe if you're a non-follower, you can listen and at some point uh, maybe come to that, that idea that, you know, there's something to this. Because I believe in the heart of all of us is a deep desire that there's someone greater. And I'm telling you, there is. And specifically, his name is Jesus. And all God's people out there said, if you want to back that up uh, for our other viewers who may not feel that way. And guys, don't ever, ever, ever uh, condemn someone who doesn't feel like that. Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. You know, not that everyone would, not everyone would be healed. So let's go into this real quick. A physician, Jesus, the great physician, he is concerned about the physical healing of the body and he is skilled in the art of physical healing, much like a physician would be over your physical body uh, in the natural world. And remember this, you are spirit, you are soul, and your body. So let me ask you a question. Do you think God is concerned with your spirit? Answer over there in the comments. Do you guys believe, and I want to just go around here and see what you're saying. Do you guys, I'm watching you now, so you can hit some likes, hit some comments. Yeah, I'm, I'm right here watching you. I see you, Phil, Barbie, Danielle, Sandra, Wendy Lynn Jameson. Do you believe that God, Jesus, is concerned with your spirit? Let me see a yes or a no. I'm waiting on you. There you are, Teresa Philly. That's right. He is concerned. That's right, Brandy. I see you. I see you guys. God is absolutely concerned with your spirit. Let me ask you a second question. Do you believe that God is uh, concerned with your soul. Do you believe that God's concerned with your soul? Just pop it over there if you do. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if God is concerned with, look, 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 why did he make you three parts? He made you spirit, soul, and body, and we all have agreed so far that he is concerned with our spirit, he's concerned with our soul. Why is God only concerned with two-thirds of you? Hmm, good question, huh? Why would God, who created you to be three parts, and he's concerned with your spirit, he's concerned with, concerned with your soul, and why would he not be concerned with your body? Let's talk about this. Because what I said earlier is that some of you have been let down because your life's experience didn't match your Sunday school stories. Some of you have actually walked away from church, walked away from faith, walked away from God, walked away from Christ. Definitely any kind of faith that burns inside of you because you were told if you would pray a certain way and you'd do a certain thing, you'd read your Bible and you'd give enough money that God would just become a cosmic vending machine and he would just do whatever you asked for. And that's not God. I, 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 as, as good as God is, he's good enough not to give us everything we want and everything we think we need. And, and I don't understand his ways. His, his ways and his thoughts are so much bigger than mine. So I don't try to pretend to say that, but I want you to know that 
God is not trying to hurt you. God's trying to heal you. And there's three ways God heals our physical bodies. Number one, God heals us naturally. Number two, God heals us medically. And number three, God heals us miraculously. And many of you had no problem when I said naturally. Many of you had no problem when I said medically. But when I said miraculously, there was something inside of you that did not want to associate or be uh, you know, involved with some of that crazy healing teaching where people trying to throw you around and all this stuff and pull you up out of a wheelchair. And all. Listen to me. Come on, guys. Jesus is not a sensationalist. While he did go around healing people, he didn't go around healing people so people would look at him. He went around healing people because he loved them. He went around healing people because he's good. So let me go back to this. Jesus heals naturally, medically, and miraculously. Just deal with that word for a minute. Naturally, have you ever had a cut? Did it heal? Do you know why when you had a cut it healed? Because Jesus designed your body to heal itself. Your body would have bled out had he not designed your body because, look, there is no accidents when you build a computer, when you build a piece of technology. Anything that that computer or that piece of technology is capable of is because someone programmed the O's. Someone programmed to do that. Your body heals itself because a great design, not by accident. Give me a break. Look, if you were riding your lawnmower through the grass and you had one of those up tight right pools and it threw a rock through your pool, do you, does your pool uh, automatically fix its leak itself? Does it go, woo, I'm hurt, boom, I'm healed? No, because it doesn't have the O's in it. It wasn't designed by a master designer who had a plan. Your body was designed by a master designer who had a plan and it's healed. Don't ever discount number two. So he heals it naturally. Number two, he heals it medically. Never, 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 never discount medical science and the wisdom of God that comes through it. Who do you think led us to plants and to roots to, to uh, medicate specific things in our body? Chemical compounds to take these things that were once undefined and bring them together. Where do you think that wisdom comes from? Have you ever wondered why people are so smart? It's because we are made in the image and likeness of God. Do you know why dogs and cats don't put chemicals together and create compounds to heal each other? Because they're not made in the image and likeness of God. Well, dogs might be, but we know cats aren't. I'm just kidding. All right, so the third way he heals is miraculously. So naturally, medically, miraculously. Let me go back to medically for a minute. And there's something called mental health. Come here, I need to throw this out there. Quit mocking mental health. Mental health is a serious issue. It's a scientific issue. It's, it's, it, you would never mock someone who went to the doctor to get their gallbladder taken out. You'd never mock someone who's having an open heart surgery. You'd never mock someone who was having an amputation done. Why do we mock people who have to go get medications and go to doctors and go to scientists for mental, mental uh, not just awareness, but their mental health? That's not something we mock, and we do not, as the body of Christ, mock science. We do not mock medicine. We do not mock both mental and physical, and God is concerned with both. So let me just say this. He designed us, and he created us, and he heals us naturally, medically, miraculously, and all God's people said amen. Let me give you some verses real quick, and let me pray for you. Uh, Mark, let me find where I'm at right Huh? Mark, let me go to, which one I want to read first? I want to read Mark. Let's go Matthew. Matthew, and when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion. I want you to say that. He was moved with compassion. Why does Jesus heal people? Because he's moved with compassion. Compassion simply defined is love in action. Say that with me. Compassion is love in action. One more time. Compassion is simply love in in action. And when Jesus saw the great multitude, he was moved with compassion for them and he healed their sick. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. And then Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame spread throughout Syria and they brought him all the sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them all. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and beyond the Jordan. Let me give you a couple more verses real quick. 
Matthew chapter 8, 16 and 17. And when evening had come, they brought to him all who were demon-possessed and cast out spirits of the word, and they were all healed. He healed the sick, that he might fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Come on, I just love these verses. Why is Jesus the great uh, healer? Because he's filled with compassion. Jesus wasn't trying to sensationalize and bring all kind of just big old fame on him. Jesus is not a dispensationalist as to the point of he only healed at one time and doesn't heal at others. He's still the shepherd. He's still the savior. He's still the Lord. He's still our God. He's still the great teacher. And he's still our healer. That hasn't changed. And listen to me. He's not a cosmic vending machine. And I don't understand how he picks and chooses. But everyone doesn't get healed the same way. Now, he's moved with compassion. He's moved with love. He expresses his love to people. Compassion is, remember what we said, love in action. Jesus was not healing people to prove he was God. He didn't need to prove he was God. He is God. And all God's people said, amen, amen. All right, so we live in a fallen world. We all know that. I want to read Luke 4, 40, and then I want, that'd be my last one. Uh, maybe. I got one more. And when the sun was setting, all those who... Uh, had any kind of sickness and various diseases brought to him, he laid hands on every one of them and he healed them. Okay, so over and over again, we see the Bible refer to him as a healer, as our great, great physician. But we live in a fallen world. So as much as I'd love to just heal everybody, <laughs> I, I can't. I, I, sometimes I wonder why since he can, he don't. You ever wondered that? Me too. Um, I don't think you're going to get an answer to that. I think it's a tension we're going to have to live with. I think that we're foolish to believe that we can completely encapsulate God, define Him, and explain Him. I look to Jesus when I want to explain God. I don't look to my circumstances. I don't look to my past pastors or my past church experience or my past life or this Christian over there or this Christian over there to explain God. I look to Jesus because Jesus didn't say I showed up with the best explanation of God. Jesus says I am the explanation of God. So when I see Jesus, I see him filled with compassion for sick people. Yet when I stood in the hospital in South Haven, Mississippi in 2011, and myself and my two sons, little bitty boys, laid our hands on their grandfather, my dad, we prayed that God would heal him. We prayed God that would set him free, heal him on this side of heaven. Two or more were gathered, if you want to grab that verse and snatch it. If we had faith of a mustard seed, I'm sure between the three of us we did. If anyone will come with the faith as a child, and I had two of them, I mean, we covered all the bases, we made the recipe for healing, and we prayed for my dad, and he died at 62 years old. I don't understand that. That didn't fit the recipe. And I can't expect you just to believe he's a healer. I can't expect you to believe anything. But I don't base my faith off this one teaching. I base my faith off a lifetime of his faithfulness to me. And that I can trust him. Even when he doesn't do things in a way that I feel like he should have done them. Jesus healed them all in the New Testament. But not everyone was healed. Jesus' ultimate goal is not to heal your body. It's to save your soul. Let me read these passages and I'm going to pray for you. And Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they've fallen, they've sinned. They've taken from the tree of knowledge, but there was another tree. God told them, don't eat of the tree of knowledge, but they did. And they fell, and they sinned, and God needed to cover them. Then the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take the tree of life and eat it and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden. So he sends Adam and Eve out of the garden so they will not get to the tree of life. He said, that's cruel. No, this is filled with compassion. So that they could not get to the tree of life and live forever. Verse 23, therefore the Lord sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out. Sounds mean, doesn't it? No, it's filled with compassion. And he placed cherub. And when you see cherub... Don't think of naked babies floating on clouds eating ice cream. Cherubs are massive warring angels. He placed cherub at the east of the garden, at the east end of the garden, and a flaming sword 
which turned every witch away to guard the tree of life. In other words, he pushed Adam and Eve out of the garden so they couldn't get to the tree of life. Because if they'd gotten to the tree of life and consumed the fruit, their flesh would have lived with sin forever. And the consequences of sickness and disease and problems and turmoil and aging and everything else, they would have lived forever. God, in his filled with compassion and love, pushed them out of the garden, put cherub by the gates with flaming, twirling swords to keep them out so that these bodies would die. But we are not to be afraid of the one who can kill this body or hurt this body. But we are to be in awe and respect of the one who can kill both our body and our soul. So I love him who will heal my body and my soul because my spirit is saved, my soul is being saved and my body will be saved. And all God's people said, amen. We're going to talk about probably either the Father or the Holy Spirit tomorrow, but he is your physician. Let me pray for you. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I don't have a magic dust, a magic wand, a magic recipe, but God, there's people out here dealing with sickness and I'm praying for them right now because your word tells me to and I'm just going to do it because you said so. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you bring healing to people today. Not because you want to prove something to them. And not because you want to disprove something to them. But because you are loving and compassionate and you are good. But Father, I pray we see the bigger picture. More than just a cut healing. More than just a heart healing. More than just making it out of ICU. Waking from a coma. But God, that one day we will wake from this life. Having been spared from a tree of life that would have kept us in this package forever. And that we would be set free by your truth. And that we would become whole again. And in your presence, in Jesus' name, give these people the courage and the ability to trust you today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming. Hashtag live if you're joining us live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining us pre-recorded. Uh, share this out, please. Man, there's some people that really need to hear this because they are disgruntled with God about healing or not healing them or their loved ones. They need some hope, and there's hope in Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. See you later, alligator. After a while, if you know it, finish it.